mountain bikes aren't getting any cheaper. However, as prices go up, the technology that goes into a bicycle gets better and better. Dropper posts, carbon, everything, and chain rings that you could serve a turkey dinner on all add up to make your riding experience more enjoyable. Or do they? Do you really need to spend thousands on a bike to have fun? We went to Walmart to find out. Meet the Big Flyer. With no suspension, one gear, and no brakes, this bike is pretty bare bones. However, it'll only set you back $59.95 at Walmart. Let's do a back-to-back -back comparison of these bikes. I'm going to judge them on three categories. Climbing, descending, and durability. Let's get started. The climb up from is a relatively mellow gravel road. On a mountain bike with modern geometry and suspension, it's an easy, enjoyable pedal to the top. Five out of five stars. Unfortunately, the story wasn't the same on the Walmart bike. In fact, I couldn't even make it out of the parking lot. After battling one gear and the dated geometry of the frame, I gave up and decided to walk. But due to the low weight of the bike, the walk up wasn't actually that bad. I'll give it a two out of five. Now for the fun part, descending. I chose the trail bobsled to test the downhill capabilities of the Big Flyer. It's a fast and flowy trail with easy features for beginner riders to progress on. On my bike, this trail is a blast. I feel confident while going fast and hitting the jumps on the trail. An easy 5 out of 5. I was totally prepared to be disappointed by the Walmart bike. But the Big Flyer was actually really fun. At least until the trail flattened out. Unfortunately, the fact that the pedals are always spinning made it impossible to keep your feet on. Additionally, the cramped seating position and plastic tires weren't exactly confidence inspiring. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jason, this bike has a 50 degree head angle. It should crush descents. While this is true, a head angle does not define a bike. And while the Big Flyer was fun, there were some very limiting factors when it came to descending. Three out of five stars. That leaves us with durability. Other than some dirty tires, my bike is in the same shape as when I started the ride. Five out of five stars. The Big Flyer was a little worse for wear after just one ride. One of the rear wheels managed to crack, which rendered it useless. On top of that, the head tube ovalized, which caused the whole front end to move. Although, this actually gave the Big Flyer adjustable geometry, so we'll call that a win. Finally, I know this is nitpicking, but the flag kept falling out, which forced me to stop multiple times to put back in. A disappointing one out of five. So, which bike takes the win here? I think it's pretty obvious. It's the Big Flyer, baby! Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Throw your mountain bike away! 4.5 stars on Walmart.com! Holy smash!